ഓ മയ്യായ ശ്രീ സീതാറാം യെച്ചൂരി യാ പ്ലീസ് താങ്ക് യു സർ യാ ന വൺ സെക്കൻഡ് യെച്ചൂരി ജി സർ യെച്ചൂരി ജി വൺ സെക്കൻഡ് I have no objection. Can I have something direction from you as to what time I should supposed to reply? I, only this I was on. No, this see, uh, see, you see, one second, one second. You see how I am failing to control? You see that? You, sh eh? you should sympathize with me also. But I think, uh, see, I, I hope uh, uh, maybe 5.30, shall I fix 5.30? 5.30. 5.30. बड़ी जज्बात के साथ आज बहस हो रही है बड़ी अच्छी बात और आज तक अभी तक जो कहा गया इस सब का मैं स्वागत करता हूँ But I'll move into English, sir. You don't have to wear your. You uh, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't take that way. Anyway, but uh, sir, many things have been said, and I agree with most of the points that have been made. I do not want to take time in that. But uh, there is. I'd like to begin with one point, sir. What uh, way Mr. Sharad Yadav was just left. All of us. That is another subject. Important subject. Yes. That is another important subject. That is something which I hope you you will accept his advice and have a separate discussion on the media. Yes. Uh, that that all of us would want. Yeah. yeah. Very uh, relevant. I think we'll all. Yeah. He made that. very relevant points about media. Yes. I I, yes, I, think, I subscribe sir, to that. The ministers are present here. This house should accept this to discuss the role of the media in our democracy yeah. Yeah. and also the issue of cross holdings right. and how it is how yeah, it yeah. is actually subverting the very spirit of Article 19 of the Constitution. how money is playing the role and paid news we let should have another chair, discussion sir, on the role of media let the sense of Wait the house be taken and let yeah, the yeah. discussion i think we should have another discussion on the role of media you yeah sir, now proceed now proceed the con my anyway yeah. now the time is yes sir all of us have a great pride in our democracy and the constitution that we have all adopted guarantees one man one vote or one person one vote and one word one value and this equality political of political equality is established in practice through the electoral process if the electoral process is deficient there is always a need to fine tune it over these years and what the lop said is correct over the years we have been fine tuning it but now i think a time has come when there are major changes that are required in order to ensure that the democratic choice of the people are not distorted you cannot have democratic choices being distorted by either money power or muscle power or appeals to communalism or appeals to caste and in which case democracy is is at in peril at peril and at stake these infirmities have to be corrected now the reason why i'm raising this is that we've had long discussions on electoral reforms are late Dinesh Ma Dinesh Ma uh, Goswami was there. Eh? Unfortunately, he died in a car accident. But he gave a very voluminous report. Indrajit Gupta Commission was referred to here. There was a very, uh, very, very, very good report that that was presented there. But nothing of that has actually been implemented. We need to correct. And how do we correct that? That is the question right now. The whole purpose is to stop the distortion of democracy. that is taking place in our electoral process and system today now if you want to proceed from the point of how to correct it the government in its union budget made two proposals dealing with the question of money power and influence of money during the electoral processes it said that the cash donations to political parties would now be restricted to 2000 rupees 
and from the existing 20,000 rupees. The second one they said is that there's going to be electoral bonds that will be floated. People can buy the bonds, they can give it to the political parties who can redeem the bonds. Now these two are a mere eyewash. Not only an eyewash, they are opening up newer areas for money laundering. Now if for 20,000 rupees, if I have to give a name of a person who has given me that money, for 2,000 rupees, I can give you 10 names which will be equivalent to that 20,000. Now what, what, what is the great difference that, that is being made? It's a mockery. And electoral bonds, who buys them, who gives them, who gives them to you, who then, then uh, I mean, redeems them. All this is in a veil of secrecy, except for the government of the day. Nobody else will know. And be, that can also be used for other purposes of blackmailing, saying, why have you paid so-and-so so -and -so party? So this is no reform. This is only opening up ways for further distortion. And if you... And, uh, and if you really want, if you really want to reduce the role of money passer, I have been arguing at least for a decade from this place, and I reiterate my points, which have been raised here earlier, that unless you put a ceiling on the expenditure of political parties, bring it along with the candidates. If you want to increase that ceiling, increase that ceiling. But if you do not have a ceiling on the expenditure of political parties, you cannot control the influence of money power. I have seen, sir, on the, in the airports, all of us have seen, when we go for our election campaign, our colleagues of this, old, of this house, who suddenly find that we are waiting for a commercial aircraft to take off, or that is getting late, but they fly off in their private jets, they come and land and then take the helicopter and go off for the election meetings and cover seven meetings, but we can do it only one or two at the most on road. No, we've all seen it. We've all seen it, sir. Bilkul sahi kar hai. Agar hum usi tarikhe ki campaign karna chahte hai, toh raat ko Delhi nahi lor sakte. Aur paanch paanch private jet hai dekhi hai. Aur uska hai, is baat ko chodhi hai. Lekin is sawaal ko, agar aap iske upar paaband nahi rakhna chahenge, toh bina party ke kharche ke upar, koi ceiling ka vyaar agar te nandra nahi hota, toh iske upar ankush nahi lag sakta. Usse band nahi hogi, lekin kuch na kuch ankush toh lagega. Dousri baat, hum shay dekhe le rahenge, लेकिन हम ये सीधा सीधा कह रहे हैं चेक में हो या आप को ड्राफ्ट में हो जो भी हो कॉर्पोरेट फंडिंग बैन करिए आप पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को लेट द कॉर्पोरेट्स दे मस्ट कॉपरेट विद इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी दे मस्ट कंट्रीब्यूट टू द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी लेट देम कंट्रीब्यूट टू ए स्टेट फंड लेट इट बी लेट इट बी मैनेज्ड एंड ऑपरेटेड बाय द इलेक्शन कमीशन और बाय एनी अदर एजेंसी एंड लेट दे बी दैट सिस्टम ऑफ स्टेट फंडिंग दैट द इंद्रजीत गुप्ता कमीशन हैड रिकमेंडेड and it's high time that you start implementing that. The state funding is not giving money to political parties as cash. The state funding was to be done in kind where the national recognized political parties, national and state, would be given in kind. The vehicles, the drivers, the petrol or the fuel, the number of posters to be printed in accordance with their electoral performance or the past electoral performance, and in kind. Start, start, and now you had helicopters, correct. Now you had helicopters also, number of helicopters, or the private jets, but you start this practice of state funding which exists in many other Western democracies. It's not a very new thing that is going to happen in the world. <coughs> and there, sir, I have pride in our democracy from one fact. You remember when President Obama came here for the first time? He came here and he wrote in our golden book, there's nothing golden about it, but the, you have a book in uh, the Central Hall uh, where foreign heads of state come and write. They said, greetings from the world's oldest democracy to the world's largest democracy. We had to point out that evening at the uh, Honorable President of India's banquet, sir, this is also not correct to say that you are the world's, uh, world's oldest democracy. Oh, how can it be? Yeah. No, no. Okay, they, 1970 and 76, and you know, they charter, etc., etc., they talk of. But President Obama, democracy. President Obama was born yeah. one year before all the African Americans got their universal suffrage in the USA. If that had not happened, they got it in 1962. He was born in 1961. 
otherwise there would have been no universal suffrage we gave it from day one sir yeah yeah that is the pride in our democracy but how do you exercise that you exercise that through an efficient electoral system electoral process and if the electoral process is being distorted like this like what we have seen in the manipur and, and absolutely correct wherever at least i have been in the campaign what uh, see ram gopal yadav my colleague uh, said here that all around there is a widespread suspicion that this entire note bandi was done or demonetization to help the ruling party so that they can spend money well the other parties cannot because these restrictions have been put on them this is a widespread feeling among people right wrong improve it uh, i mean that, that that is a separate matter but the question is if this cannot these two steps are not taken sir party expenditures under a ceiling and ban corporate funding to political parties let it go to a state corpus let the state i mean from there a process of state funding come you cannot at least put some restrictions on the misuse of money in a, in influencing the electoral process and this money power at play which has reached the 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 height the height of a crescendo here today is what we have seen in the la, in the recent elections and and that is where sir this is a very important issue that has to be immediately addressed i'll give you my suggestions of how we think it should be addressed the second point i want to make, make sir is very <clears throat> important point which the leader of the opposition also dealt with and that is concerning our democracy democracy we understand is the rule of the majority and till now since independence i think except for one occasion except for once no central government was there in india which commanded more than 50% of the support of the people who voted forget the whole electorate of the people who voted not once i think but maybe i have told that there is one occasion the closest i remember in my lifetime was when mr rajiv gandhi got that 405 we came up to about 42% to 43% even then not more than 50 ah uh, 48 i mean it never crossed the 50% mark if democracy is the rule of the majority this has to be corrected sir and if this has to be corrected we'll have to move towards a partial proportional system and they are right they said 31% is what the bjp got in the last election 39% with all their nda supporters so 61% of the people who voted 67 68 69 yeah. 69 voted against the bjp but 61 give them the benefit of doubt including their allies 61 of percent of those who voted voted against the bjp but in our system of the first past the post they have the majority and they are entitled to form the government under our constitution but this is a this is a weakness that we have to reconsider and i think the time has come for a serious consideration of the partial proportional representative system yes yes india is a country with immense diversity our diversity is such and it's very natural that every specific entity in our country would like their person to be represented in the parliament that's absolutely legitimate that legitimate aspiration of the indian people must be kept in mind at the same time this distortion of democracy where it's not the rule of the majority that has to be corrected so that can only be done through a partial proportional representative system whereby you could consider we have made the suggestions in the past that out of the 542 seats you have in the lok sabha you you club two seats two seats together and reduce the number to one half of this 542 271 and in every constituency every voter has two votes one for the individual and one for the political party and that political party will submit to the election commission a list before the election depending on the percentage of vote depending on the percentage of the vote that that political party gets the election commission will decide how many number of mps they'll have and accordingly that will be filled up while individual also gets the right to be elected By, by in the same constituency so you have a where the diversity of india can also be maintained and the democratic the democratic principle can also be maintained then you will be at least ensuring that the government that comes into office is a government that enjoys 
more than 50% of the people who have voted in that election. Otherwise, we are not really following a democratic system in, in the, in, by, uh, under the definition that democracy is the rule of the majority. So time has come, sir, that we have to consider this and also an advantage of this. There are two advantages of this. Partial proportional says, uh, representative system. We have, in this house, I remember, standing here, where we had to use the marshals to pass the Women's Reservation Bill. And it has not happened in the other house, and it has now gone to the other house, but it has lapsed. For more than a decade, nearly two decades, I think, we have been, where is Jayaji? She is not here, the woman. Two decades we have been talking about this women's uh, urban reservation. In the proportional representation system, it can be made mandatory that every party will give one third of, its, uh, of the list that it submits as women. That will ensure the women's representation in the parliament. Secondly, with the proportional representation system, the use of your money power, muscle power, caste appeals, communal appeals, etc., etc., can also be curtailed because people are going to vote for the political program of the political parties. Not, not for the individual appeals. That can be there in the, in the other part for individual candidates. But, sir, this sort of a system has to be brought into India today if we really want to fine-tune and perfect our democratic setup which I started with saying that this is a very important, important and uh, aspect of our country of which at least my generation, born after the constitution was adopted, is very proud of. The other distortion that we have been talked of and very eloquently, my senior colleague Charanji has spoken about the media, uh, <laughs> about the media and, and the control over the, sir, Print and electronic media, we have discussed in this house, I have participated in that discussion earlier also on the, on the question of paid news. But nothing has happened. Are, are, are. <laughs> but nothing has happened. But nothing has happened on that issue. The time has come when paid news is identified as paid news, that is, must be treated as an advertisement and the money should be charged to the account of the political party or to the candidate. First of all, try to stop it. Penalize, take some action on this question of paid news. Secondly, this control over the media that you have. What has been raised is absolutely correct. <coughs> no major democracy in the world allows cross-holding of the media. No major democracy. And there you cannot hold, the same corporate cannot hold a print a uh, newspaper and a, new, a TV channel and, and electronic, <laughs> electronic uh, you know, sites. And what has been said about social media is absolutely correct. I show you, sir, on, on this, the number of uh, things that have come up, where now today WhatsApp has been estimated to be 98% of the social media uh, with uh, cross-current of, of, of the opinions. 98%. Your Facebook and Twitter, I have come, come down to, I mean, they are invention of 2014. Three years is a long time in information technology. Now, now they have all gone into the background. And this, there is no control over this WhatsApp. What is the content? What goes on there? What is the entire complete distortions that happen there? And there are whole surveys that have been done, how the BJP has won the UP election through the use of the WhatsApp. Right, wrong. But what is the control over this fourth estate that Sharanji was talking about? Cross-holding, we, we have to ban cross-holding. You have to ensure that paid news, some criminal, some, some new laws have to be made in order to penalize. And I, my appeal was, but through you, and I, I mean to all our journalist friends, very good minds, very good patriots, they want India to be vibrant and become good. But we told them right then, please don't make the mistake of moving from a fixed salary into a contract. But they did. And we see now what is happening, what, what Sharanji was talking about. The, the control of the owners of the media, it's, it's, it's a vice-like grip. Your electronic media. You say the state will, Dur Darshan will give equal, I mean, equal amount of time depending on the percentage of vote polled by each national party. But in the private media, not zero. 
State funding should also include that in the private media also, according to the same proportion, the time will be allotted to all the parties and nobody can get a disproportionate time. That has to be done. You open any channel today. Honorable Prime Minister's speech is live telecast in every single private channel. It's a public broadcaster. But, 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 but there's only one. There's only one camera that goes with the Prime Minister, and that is the public broadcaster. But, but everybody takes it from that public broadcaster to give it a live coverage. Huh? Now, and sir, if you, if you are traveling, I mean, which I, I do once in a while, I mean, not once in a while, quite a number of times, when you're driving and listening to the radio, when the Honorable Prime Minister speaks Man Ki Baat, all your old songs of Hindi songs, everything vanishes. Every single FM radio is only that. Only Man Ki Baat. Fine, I mean, the, the Prime Minister has got a right to talk to the people, but fine. But, but then, I mean, how do, you, how do you take away the choices before the people? Is that democracy? You have, you have radio stations that are dedicated to playing certain types of music or certain types of, I mean, issues. But all that is taken off. Is that democracy, sir? So what is happening to the media is something that needs to be, <coughs> needs to be seriously discussed. Majitya committee? Majitya committee is there. Before that, sir, there are so many committees, so many suggestions. But there is no doubt about it. Huh? अफसोस की बात है कि अगर इसी सेशन में करें तो कल कल ही दे देगी जाए त्रिपाठी जी बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं सर अब आप आप इसको मान लीजिए एस एस चेयर यू हैव द राइट या कल या परसों डेट फिक्स कर दीजिए और 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 हम लोग सब तैयार हैं कि इसके बारे में हम हम इसके बारे में सीरियसली चर्चा करें लेकिन ये बात सही है इतनी बुरी उस समय भी नहीं था सिनेमा हॉल में जब न्यूज़ रील आती थी तो हम उठ के चले जाते थे बाहर कि 10 मिनट के बाद आ जाएंगे जब न्यूज़ रील खत्म हो जाएगी क्योंकि ये प्रोपेगेंडा है लेकिन आजकल वो उस वो मौका भी नहीं है सर आपको बिना बिना कुछ चांस ही नहीं मिलता बाहर जाने के लिए वो बॉम्बार्डमेंट हो जाता तो इसके बारे में आपको कुछ करने की जरूरत है नेक्स्ट पॉइंट सर आई वांट मेक इज अबाउट द ईवीएमस आई वाज शोइंग व्हेन शरद जी वाज टॉकिंग हियर Sir, this is, an, this is an issue. The last point. No, no, no. No, no, sir. I've got seven more points. Yeah. But uh, there was enough. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? Mr. Advani, the spokesperson of the BJP today, Mr. Narsibarao, and democracy at risk due to EVMs. That is... Now, I have been party to all these discussions with the Election Commission. From the time Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu raised it, down to all of this, and because the maximum number of IT professionals working in the U.S. are from Andhra. So, so we, we, called, we called them, they came and demonstrated. There were some problems, the Election Commission said they will sort it out, but finally, they were all party meeting. Everybody then finally agreed, Mr. Qureshi, I remember, was the CEC. We agreed that there will be a paper trial. We proposed it, paper trial was accepted. So then Supreme Court, it went up to the Supreme Court and what the leader of the opposition said very correctly, Supreme Court has also ordered. 2013 end. 2014 government changes. Day before yesterday, Mr. Qureshi was on record in the media saying, I don't know why the government has stopped the funding for this to continue. Yesterday we saw that the Chief Election Commissioner writes to the Prime Minister of India, the head of the executive, the executive, legislature and judiciary, the three wings of our democracy. The Election Commission is the constitutional authority. It doesn't deal with the executive. If it has, it deals with the president or officers appointed by the president. It's unprecedented for the Election Commission to deal with the executive. But look at the desperation. There's no other option because the government is not releasing funds. And this has to be done. And this has to be done before the next election. And that is why. If they do Gujarat election pre-pawn, then you can think about it in Himachal. It will be that the Gujarat election pre-pawn will not be the paper trail. And if you come to Himachal, the paper trail will be the paper trail. 
ये भी सोच लीजिए आप आप पेपर बैलेट हो अब कैसे बट बट नी केस दिस हैज टू हैपन इमीडिएटली सर सर यू लुक एट दिस पेपर ट्रेल मिस्टर राम गोपाल यादव गेव यू द फिगर्स फॉर यूपी I know in the last general elections in Bengal, paper trail was done in 22, 22 constituencies. Out of 22 constituencies, 12 they won, 10 we won. Now I am not going to the result. What it what it is? But that confidence that the EVMs cannot be manipulated, you have that fallback option. You have you have that insurance on it. If there is a dispute, you count the paper, you count the ballot papers, and not the EVM machine count. that confidence comes into the whole system and to the machine election commission is prepared supreme court is ordered why are we not doing it sir <coughs> tell me why are we not doing it sir and that is where i think by not doing it you are uh, you are creating great problems for our democracy it work the sixth point sir that i want is the simultaneous elections sir you have been much older than me you've got many more elections and all of them about satra bar to yelade 1952 the election started simultaneously sir 1957 they were simultaneous sir why did you why did you no by the net distortion had come why why did this separation happen article 356 dismissal of the kerala government and then after that dismissal of the other governments so the time could not be matched so are you prepared to remove article 356 from the constitution tell me if you want simultaneous elections will you remove article 356 from the indian constitution if you cannot remove it you cannot have simultaneous elections so you please understand but what are you talking about is not a gimmick reason or an advertisement this is seriously you are talking about your democracy at work and here in this democracy when i say i got there's a there's a pride for it that pride exists because of our entire diversity you can have and you will have very often coalition governments and in coalition governments there'll be problems with one partner or the other partner they may withdraw support in between we have done it <laughs> in, the, in the past somebody or somebody else will will do it but that's our democratic right you can't deny that right under the indian constitution but by saying you will have only simultaneous elections what are you saying the no for 5 years your democracy and your democratic rights are not applicable what is this sir are we making rendering into a, i mean some sort of a non serious issue they now say that okay in 2009 their state governments they will uh, dissolve and then have simultaneous election this is a surreptitious manner in which our parliamentary democracy is sought to be substituted by presidential form this is something we cannot allow and our country through an exhaustive debate in the constituent assembly adopted the parliamentary form of democracy because of the diversity that we have in our country which is unparalleled anywhere in the world correctly somebody has said uh, i mean you could probably have it in a two party system but with with an indian diversity with this sort of i mean uh, uh, country that we have parliamentary democracy is the only form through which democracy can survive in our country that is what dr ambedkar said from there the entire the constituent assembly said and we came to that conclusion this is a backdoor method to try and bring back a presidential form and that is something that cannot be allowed and that is why the simultaneous elections is not merely a question of saving money okay it's it's, a, it's not a it's not a question of simply saving money it's not a, a question of simply saying code of conduct uh, doesn't allow me to work yes those are problems we can try and uh, resolve but don't try and tinker with our system distort our parliamentary democracy by trying to bring in presidential form through the back door okay that is something that cannot be allowed finally sir finally please please finally there are many other issues on electoral reform sir you have the question of disqualification question of criminal conviction disqualification on conviction or before when the charge sheet is filed etc these are issues that require to be seriously discussed since you already pressed the bell i'm not going to the details but sir communal appeal i have a serious problem in this elections in up 
you can have leaders go and openly talk about Kasab, Kabristan, Shamshan Ghat, Eid, Diwali. The straightforward communal appeal trying to polarize, uh, polarize the people uh, and nothing happens. And who are these? The honorable prime minister of the country, the leader of the uh, ruling party of the country, the president. And if they can go and make such appeal, sir, and there is no control, no restriction, then what, what, what is our democracy all about? Why do we have this Indian Penal Code? Why do you have these sections in it saying appeal to all that is, is actually a criminal act? No, this is something that has to be seriously considered. And there are other issues like, you know, whether you should allow anybody to contest more than one seat, sir. Why should you in a democracy? Why should any person contest in, in two seats or more than two, two seats or three seats? That is, that is a gross waste of public money. You'll have to resign from one, unless you lose both the seats. That's a different matter. <laughs> so there are many such issues. Finally, finally my point. Sir, you have, you have a, after this government assumed office, you have a very proactive, uh, hyperactive law commission. The Law Commission is asking all of us as political parties for various opinions and various things including common civil code, etc., etc. <coughs> the Law Commission has ordained for itself the right to redraft our constitution, I think, which is something that must be disabused from that. They had sent in October 2014, after this government assumed office, soon after, opinions to various political parties on a consultation paper on electoral reforms. We have given our opinion. I'm sure every party has given their opinion. All of us have given. Today is 2017. Nothing has happened. So my final point is urging the government to establish a mechanism through which this entire issue of electoral reforms can be properly discussed. And that, like Sharanji okay. said, it could be a house committee, a joint house okay. committee, yes. or along with other legal experts, etc., constitutional experts, form a proper committee with leading political figures and legal experts and constitutional experts, and let us get down to the business of seriously reforming our electoral process. Yes, that's this is absolutely essential yeah. for our democracy. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Sri Sadish Chandra Misra.